What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today I will show you the biggest LEGO Technic set from the first batch of 2021. This is the 42125 Ferrari 488 GTE. The box looks pretty serious. It follows the design language of the new 18 plus sets. As you can see, it is labeled on the box as well. So, why is it 18 plus? Is it that complex? The Bugatti was only 16 plus. The huge Leap Hair set is only 12 plus. So, what can we expect from this set that makes it so serious? Additionally, the price is 179.99 euros or 169.99 dollars, which is visibly higher than the Porsche 911 RSR, which is a quite similar set, and it has only around 100 pieces less. Let's see if the premium price is really justified. On the back of the box, we get some cool photos of the Lego version and also the real car, along with some performance data. The box looks really nice, there are some additional details on the sides as well. Now let's open it. There are 12 numbered bags inside. The building process is split into 5 phases. There are 2 unnumbered bags with additional pieces, a separate paper bag for the manual and the sticker sheets, which is way better than the plastic one. Good work, Lego! So we get the manual and 2 huge sticker sheets. Do you see anything weird? Yeah, I did not realize it first, but these are actually 2 identical sheets. Now let's see if there's anything left in the bag. Yes, here is the missing one. So apparently I got an extra sheet, how nice! But even without that duplicate we have a huge amount of stickers. The manual is quite nice, unlike the smaller sets we get a lot of background information this time. We can learn about the car, the team and the designer of the LEGO version as well. At the end of the manual there are some nice photos about the details, which predicts that there aren't many functions to demonstrate. But let's not jump forward. Here is the obligatory part list with some exciting new parts. Let's take a closer look at them. We get a new curved piece that fits between the bigger panel fairings. There's a printed piece for the headlights, which I'm sure will cause some debates. It's funny to see the Speed Champions windshield in this form, by the way. These mudguard panels in red are unfortunately two steps shorter than the ones on the Cyan, so it won't be easier to build that one in red. The most interesting piece is this extension for the mudguard panel. It does not attach to it directly, but some external mounting is required. Now let's start building. The process begins with the rear differential. I'm sure you've seen this setup previously, there's nothing new in the first few steps. As the model is not motorized, the good old simple differential is used here. The rear axles are completed, the building so far still looks awfully familiar. I will not spoil things, but if you build the 42077 rally car or the 42096 Porsche, I'm sure you know what I mean. I will do a separate comparison video with them soon, here's a little sneak peek of it. Now things become a bit different, as the new 11x7 Technic frame is used for the bottom, that was not available yet when the previous cars were released. And not only the 11x7 frame, but the bigger 13x9 frame is used as well. Is it oversimplification or optimization? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here comes the V8 engine that uses the traditional engine blocks that we do not see frequently, a lot of cars have smaller engines nowadays. The engine gets stabilized in the sides, and then on the front as well. After a few more extra pieces, this is where we are at the end of bags 1. Bags 2 start with the front axle. The support structure for the front axle is quite different now. Instead of the 7x5 frame, there's a structural build of different beams. There's a bigger frame supporting the bottom. The attachment for the spring on the lower steering arm is quite interesting. It also serves as a limiter for the whole assembly. Here is the steering rack assembled. Apparently, it will be connected with the steering wheel through a series of gears. And now it's time to join the two parts together. I have to say, it is quite weird to see these big frames used. The structure looks very empty. I really wonder how it will look like at the end. After some structural reinforcement on the sides, the chassis is much more rigid. Time to add the driver's seat. Here are the famous black rotor blades from the Osprey set. You still need quite a few Ferraris to make your authentic Osprey replica. But the release of the parts in a new set hopefully means that they will become available again on bricks and pieces. These are also the first and pretty big stickers to apply. At the end of bags 2, the final piece is the steering wheel. This is how our build looks like at the moment. With bags 3, we start to build the front of the car, and we need to get familiar with the huge sticker sheets, trying to find stickers with number 40 something, even up to 57. 
and here are some system parts to add some details. So I was building patiently the hood with some interesting support structures inside and then comes this. I know it's a race car, but holy moly that's a lot of stickers. And about 10 minutes and a few grey hairs later we can already attach the hood to the body. As you could see previously the front light is a huge printed transparent piece with some system bricks to support it. It looks okay-ish, but I'm sure some of you will miss some proper brick built headlights. An interesting detail, LEGO does not like to put stickers overlapping on multiple pieces. Here we have an A stud long tile and a 1x1 tile, but the sticker is only applied to the long piece. In order to have the correct pattern the sticker is actually asymmetric and the shorter side is not really visible when you view it from a distance. The front section is coming together nicely. Some serious beam stacking is happening here. This is the front splitter that is luckily black and does not have stickers at all. After adding some details to the front section, here comes the first wheel arch with a pretty complicated setup and some flex axles to fill the gaps. After seeing that new middle piece for the small fairings in the smaller sets, now we have one for these bigger ones as well. Here comes the dashboard with bigger Technic pieces and some system parts for the smaller details and this is the end of back 3. In the next phase we focus on the rear section. Here is the new middle piece for the small panel fairings I just mentioned, this time we get it in white. We've got some interesting building techniques here with fine details, a decent amount of parts used for such a small section. The rear lights look pretty cool with these transparent pieces, Interestingly, the 2x2 round piece only appeared in this trans red color in two previous Ferrari racers set about 15 years ago. Time to assemble the rear wheel arch and the extension piece. They have to be attached with some additional pieces on both ends. This is a quite funny piece to fill some gaps. It still needs to be secured in place going forward. Here's a side panel with some interesting attachment points and some wacky small wings to fill the gaps. And we are finished with bags 4. The last bag starts with an interesting structure that quickly becomes much more complex. By the way, if you thought that the color variation only happens with the line pieces, well, think again. The similar pieces with an axle had a similar issue in lime and they were darker as well. If you ask me, I would say it is a slightly different type of plastic. Anyway, back to the build. I'm sure you already found out, this is the roof of the car. We have to connect it at the A-pillars and at the back as well. There are quite a few things to connect here actually. Now comes the cover for the rear end and finally we can push these pieces in place as well. Here is the door. It is actually quite simple compared to the other sections. Ah ok, so it was not finished yet. Now it's much better. We need to turn the car upside down to add the rear diffuser. It is a mix of Technic and System bricks, but you need to pay attention to mount it in one piece. While it is upside down it is time to add the wheels. The final touch is the rear spoiler and our Ferrari is ready. From the outside the car has lots of details, certain areas look quite nice and look like the original, but there are some big gaps here and there. The overall proportions are ok compared to the real one, although the wheels seem to be too big and surprisingly the tires have lower profile than the original ones, usually it's the other way around. I'm sure you noticed already, there are stickers everywhere. The original, being a race car, has a full race livery and the stickers on the LEGO version work ok if you look at the car from a distance, but if we take a closer look then the gaps are quite visible unfortunately. Now let's see the features. It has independent suspension on all wheels and it works quite well, but the car sits pretty high compared to the real one, since that almost touches the ground. The suspension has to be compressed almost fully to look like the real one. We have opening doors and the working steering wheel in the cabin. Unfortunately there's no hand of god steering, so it's similar to the Porsche in this matter. The set is not really playable this way. The interior is moderately detailed, but it is a race car so there should not be high expectations. The rear wheels are driving the V8 engine through a differential. It is interesting to see the lack of detail in the engine bay. There's not even a Ferrari sticker on the tile on top which is quite surprising. Apparently LEGO wanted to differentiate this model from the high-end supercar models like the Lamborghini or the Bugatti and only add details to those. Thanks to the large Technic frames used in the chassis there are huge gaps in the model. This does not really help with the rigidity and it looks kind of unfinished, 
but I'm sure people who want to motorize the set will be very happy about it. Otherwise the set is pretty sturdy, you can grab it by the roof and there are only certain areas where you need to pay attention. So let's sum it up. Here is a model that looks definitely cool, a real racing Ferrari. Although it is not the same scale like the Lamborghini or the Bugatti, it is still pretty impressive and looks great on any shelf or desk. The building process is not boring at all, there are quite a few details added and some interesting building techniques used here and there. If you don't like stickers then it will be a challenge for you, but the end result from a certain distance is quite appealing. So what's the problem? Well, apparently the 18 plus category is not about the complexity of the build or the functions, but the fact that it is a display model and not something to play with. Apart from the obligatory fake engine, the steering wheel and the doors, there are no any Technic functions in it. Really, the McLaren Senna, which is a set for 50 bucks, offers more playability as it has at least hand of god steering. As I see with the 18 plus category, the detailed bodywork and the lack of playable functions, this set belongs to a new supercar light category. LEGO releases the 1 to 8 supercars only every second year with a pretty hefty price tag. Since apparently there's a demand for yearly released licensed cars for a more likable price, LEGO is happy to fill the gap with cars like the Porsche 911 RSR or this Ferrari. So why they chose Technic instead of releasing bigger cars in the Creator Expert line then? Although system bricks would allow more details, but at this scale those cars would require significantly more bricks as well, and that means a higher price tag. Technic offers a good balance between details and piece count, so it seems to be a good solution. My only problem? Technic should be focusing on functions, and Technic cars should offer more than a well-decorated empty shell. I know that modders are happy to use and fill that empty shell with motors or extra functions, but I would expect more of that out of the box. Let's leave the shelf queen status to the supercar line. So, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my Technic reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!